Hello, and welcome back to Epileptic Disorders Roadmap to EEGs. My name is Erfan Sheikh, and in this module, we will talk about interictal epileptiform discharges, the operational criteria. When reviewing an EEG, it is important to understand and to accurately determine if a waveform noted on EEG can be considered as an interictal epileptiform discharge, IED. IED are important to recognize as they can be biomarkers for seizures and epilepsy, especially if focal in nature. Generalized discharges are often seen in patients with generalized epilepsies. Here we will go over some examples with regards to source localization and interictal epileptiform discharges. Before we go over some examples of interictal epileptiform discharges, we will discuss some basic principles. This diagram goes over six criteria proposed by the IFCN which, when met, have a reasonable sensitivity and specificity to characterize a particular waveform as an epileptiform discharge. As we go through each criterion, we will refer back to this sample drawing of a typical discharge and highlight where each criterion would be met. The first criteria we will discuss is a morphology of the waveform in question. In order to be characterized as an epileptiform discharge, the waveform must have a di or triphasic morphology with a sharp spiky component, i.e. a pointed peak. In this diagram, the part of the waveform highlighted in red shows a diphasic wave with a sharp spiky component, i.e. a pointed peak, which is consistent with the first criterion. The second criterion is looking for the duration of the waveform. As you can see, Outlined by the green below the sharp wave, the duration of the epileptiform discharge is shorter, i.e. different, in comparison to the duration of the waveforms that preceded. This fulfills criterion number two. The third criterion is looking for asymmetry of the waveform. The point of asymmetry is that the upslope and downslope are not of equal steepness, i.e. one is steeper than the other. This is highlighted by the orange line in the diagram where the upslope of the discharge is steeper when compared to the downslope. The fourth criterion is looking for an aftergoing slow wave. In the diagram, the light blue highlight represents the slow wave component of the epileptiform discharge. The fifth criterion is that the background activity is disrupted. Now, if it's after the spike, then it's usually a low voltage and high frequency activity, which is instead of the slow wave. Additionally, some interictal epileptiform discharges are followed by a flattening or electrodecrement. Rarely, this can be present just before the spike, i.e. it does not necessarily follow the spike. The sixth and final criterion is looking for distribution. This can be done through voltage maps looking at the negative and positive potentials that would suggest a source in the brain corresponding to a radial, oblique, or tangential orientation of the source. If no voltage maps are available, the distribution can be assessed through the average reference montage. In this slide, we will ask the question how many criteria need to be there in a routine EEG. In order to achieve a specificity of greater than 95%, having met greater or equal to 5 out of the 6 criteria than one sharp wave transient is sufficient enough to characterize as an epileptiform discharge. When criteria 1, 4, and 6 are met, then having greater or equal to 2 sharp transients are needed to reach a threshold of greater than 95% specificity to characterize an epileptiform discharge. When any of the four criteria out of the six are met, then four or more sharp transients will be needed to achieve a specificity of greater than 95% to characterize an epileptiform discharge. And finally, if any three out of the six criteria are met, then five or more sharp transients will be needed to achieve a specificity of greater than 95% to characterize an epileptiform discharge. In this example, we will take a look at the sharp wave located in the red circle. Initially, on first glance, you could see that there is a diphasic wave with a pointed peak. Additionally, the waveform of question has a different wave duration than the ongoing background activity. There is asymmetry of the waveform with a steeper downslope in comparison to an upslope. There is a slow afterwave, as best noted in the T8 and P8 region. Looking at the same waveform in average montage, you can see clearly the respected field of the waveform. Also concerning the change in the background activity, i.e. criteria number five, you can see before the spike, there is an increase in the beta activity. 
Looking at the voltage maps, you can see the source of the waveform is clearly from the brain, thus confirming an interictal epileptiform discharge in the right temporal region. In this example, you can see an abnormal waveform marked by the annotation. First, the waveform has a pointed peak and is spiky. There is a different wave duration than the ongoing background activity. The asymmetry of the waveform can be debated, and at first glance may not be as asymmetric compared to the other examples shown in this module. The background activity appears to be disrupted also at first glance. However, careful examination of the waveform, there is no preceding fast activity. Additionally, there is no fast activity, flattening, or electrodecrement that follows the waveform and thus does not fulfill criteria number five. So on this page, criterion number one, two, and four are fulfilled. Next, we will look at the respected voltage maps to see if this waveform is indicated. Looking at the average montage, you can see the respected voltage maps indicating that the waveform of question suggests a source in the brain. With criteria number one, two, four, and six fulfilled, we call this waveform as an epileptiform discharge. In this example, we will look at the abnormal waveform marked by the green annotation. Let us go through our six IFCN criteria to see if this waveform can be classified as an interictal epileptiform discharge. In this bipolar montage, looking at the first criteria, the waveform of question does have a pointed peak and is spiky. For criteria number two, the wave duration is similar to the ongoing background activity and thus not fulfilled. For criteria number three, asymmetry of the waveform cannot be appreciated. There is no slow afterwave that follows the spike. So criteria number four is not fulfilled and the background is not disrupted. So on this bipolar montage, criteria number one is the only one that can certainly be fulfilled. Next, we will take a look at the average montage and the respected voltage map to see if this waveform suggests a source in the brain. Looking at the average montage and the respected voltage map, you can see the waveform of question is in fact not a source in the brain. Additionally, the background is not disrupted by the presence of this waveform. This waveform of question is actually an artifact. In this example, we will look at the waveform marked by the green annotation, going through our six IFCN criteria. First, the waveform of question has a pointed peak and is spiky. Second, the waveform of question has a different wave duration than the ongoing background activity. On the bipolar montage, the asymmetry of the waveform may not be easily noted upon first glance, and thus we'll look at the criterion more carefully on the average montage. So in the bipolar montage, we can conclude that criteria number one and two are sufficiently fulfilled. Next, we will look at the average montage to see if we can fulfill the rest of the criteria. Looking at the average montage, you can see criteria number three can be fulfilled, although probably with low interrater agreement. Looking at P9 and T9, there is a steeper downslope when compared to the upslope, thus suggesting waveform asymmetry. Criteria number four is also fulfilled as there is a nice slow afterwave following the sharp wave. Criteria number five is not fulfilled in this case, as the background is not really disrupted with any fast activity, flattening, or electrodecrement that follows the sharp wave or preceding it. Finally, looking at criteria number six, the voltage map suggests a source in the brain. Thus, were criteria number one, two, three, four, and six met, this waveform is an epileptiform discharge. To wrap up, in this module, we have learned the six IFCN criteria for an interictal epileptiform discharge.